Okay, so I have a uh, crank and head for a guy. Uh, I ground the crank and now I'm going to be balancing it and I'm gonna get this head at least started. Um, sometimes I will walk away from heads just because they can be a bit tedious and exhausting. Um, but I think we're gonna make a video out of those two things. I've already got the guides, well, got quite a ways. Um, blasted, vapor blasted, uh, new guides are installed. These are uh, C630 Kibble White and um, inside diameter is honed to 311. And then we will go ahead and get the seats cut and assemble this thing. Uh, nothing really too fancy, just a standard um, head rebuild. We're not gonna do any fancy springs or anything like that. Um, and then balance job, typical, but we'll go through it anyway, just because I haven't done any normal shop video in a while. So this will be a fun one. It's all for the same guy, so I need to get it done, which makes me want to um, make the video kind of complete. It'll all work out. It seems like every time I try and do any head like valve seat, related content i get a lot of cereal box experts telling me about how they would do it or what i'm doing is wrong because of something related to like a small block chevy um for that reason i'm not going to give very many details on this i will just kind of uh do it um these aren't necessarily advertisements i'm not trying to get you to send me your head because of these videos it's mostly just because I enjoy watching people work on things, so I work on things. Maybe somebody wants to watch me do it. It's not because I'm trying to convince you to send me your stuff. Um, if that happens, cool. If not, um, you know, maybe you'll make sure that whoever you do pick to do the work will do it the way you want it done. Um, I'm going to start. These are only have the 45. That's the way they are from the factory. Um, you know, Triumph used to sell a uh, seat cutting kit that looked like this, and that's it. You just cut it, and you're done. Um, I'm going to do a 30, 45, 60, and so that way I can kind of narrow up the face on this and we'll have good contact and a good seal. Um, so because right now it's just the hemispherical angle into the 45, um, I'm going to just kind of see where I'm at get everything kind of started, and then I will like de-shroud and clean up the transition between the hemispherical uh, angle and then, you know, that 30. So it's gonna have kind of a shelf look, like a pocketed look. Um, realistically, I, I maybe 10 thousandths at the most of actual depth, um, you know, increase, uh, valve protrusion, however you wanna say it, but when I'm cutting it, it's not really going that far. Um, you know, it, it just is going to look a little bit more exaggerated than what it does now just because instead of that nice clean blend, it will have kind of this um, de-shroud or, you know, kind of a, a cutaway around it to allow better flow and transition. So we are going to see where we're at. I do like to make a mark. If I can find a marker. Okay, so I stopped here because I wanted to show you. I did a few passes. Um, here, there's still just a little bit of the original um, face of the seat. Uh, and then as you kind of work around, you can see the new fresh cut over here. So, got a little ways to go yet before I've got a full clean 45. I've done a little bit of 30 and then obviously blended it um, nicely there. So, I use... Um, Use new way cutters. I would really like to get a stone um, grinder and uh, do it that way, but I'm waiting on the right deal. So for now, I just go ahead and do the the new ways. They work good. Um, it takes a little bit of time, but it's worth it. I, I like to do it by hand. I do have uh, the power feed. Um, I do have the power feed here. I don't really like using it just because you don't feel it as good. I like using the uh, hand cutters just because then I can actually tell um, how it's cutting, the grip, all that kind of stuff. So I, that's just how I like to do it. But um, either way, I'm going to continue on and I will update you when something else changes.
the idea is that the contact of the face is so even and and straight that instead of it you know hitting one side and just thudding to the bottom like it did when I first dropped it in it's contacting you know all the way around and that's what causes it to bounce like that eh, you know it's just a fun little trick but um, I'm still really high uh, if we kind of look at where my magic marker is getting rubbed off I need to bring I'm gonna try and get this to focus but you're not gonna be able to see it probably as well as I'd like but um, we've got a good the the bottom the 60 degree um, has a good height you know but I need to bring the 30 down the 45 covers a good portion of the face there and so I need to um, bring the the 30 in a little bit narrow up this contact and um, will be damn near perfect. So I'm going to keep working on it, but I just thought I'd show you again. It's kind of a hokey. Um, also you can probably maybe see from there the way we were talking, how the 45 just blending right in doesn't look too bad, but the minute I deshroud into that 30, um, it really makes it look like the seat is sunk. I've maybe dropped it five thousandths if that, um, and so my valve stem protrusion has um, gone up, you know, a very, very small amount. So it's kind of one of those things I always like to try and talk about with people because I know when they see the head, they're like, whoa, you really buried those seats. It's like, well, no, I didn't. You know, it just, if I left that 45 right where it was and then just did a 30 in a, a, a deshrouded, um, you know, radius around it, all of a sudden it just looks so deep, even although the 45 doesn't change really. Um, but yeah, I always like to kind of clarify that. I don't want people to think I'm doing a hack job. I tried showing the Sharpie worn off and now I'm trying to show that really nice little clean. I use 600 grit, um, lapping compound, um, just to verify I've got a good contact, but I wish you could see it. I think it's like maybe too bright. The screen's so small. I always complain about that. So I can't really tell, um, if you can see what I'm seeing, but it's a nice, clean, small face. Um, all, all four seats cut really nicely. Um, I was very happy with it. It looks good. Um, I'm going to go back now and, um, I've got some dummy valves that I stick in. Uh, I think it's like these or something like that, but I've got just some, some valves that I'll, you can tell by the ends of them. Um, I throw them in and then I'll hit like just some, uh, um, scotch bright balls in there just to kind of knock down any edges or anything like that this combustion chamber already looks really good um, and also i was going to mention you can maybe kind of tell somebody's definitely been in the uh, ports they uh you, you take the ceiling out on triumphs a lot of the time so this one's definitely been cut pretty aggressively uh it looks great i mean whoever did it did a very good job they knew what they were doing so this this head has been fl flowed um, you know, it's got a nice consistent, uh, pocket to it. So looks great. Um, this guy's got a good head. So, uh, I'm going to go ahead, clean it up. I'll scotch bright it, clean it up, and then we'll put it together. Um, I don't know. I don't really need to show that. Uh, I do want to get over onto the balance job. So, um, let's just get this taken care of and move on. It's nothing crazy. I wouldn't consider this polished or anything, but like I said, it just kind of knocks down. If, if I make a, a little bit of a an edge from the deshrouding, um, this will kind of at least smooth it out a little bit, so it's not so sharp. But um, nothing crazy, you know. Uh, I could get after it, um, you know. If somebody requested it, I could get in there and really get get some cutting done. Um, but that's not the goal with this. Uh, like um, Dan, he actually has a. Uh, it's not a Dremel tool, but it's similar, and he'll go in and, and actually, like, really, really shape all that. Um, you know, he, uh, quite an artist with it, but if, it, it, you know, if somebody asks for it, I'll do it, but on a typical head rebuild, I just kind of 
buff it, and that's it. I did have to uh, trim up the feed end on this because somebody had hammered it out, and so um, from like, I don't know, a quarter of an inch uh, in, it was still good, uh, still standard. It was right on the edge of what, you know, pretty much the average standard is on these. Um, and so I was kind of fearful to do it in the crank grinder. I do them a lot in the crank grinder, but because it had already kind of started to wear um, further up, I didn't really want to risk um, removing any more material further up. So I just went ahead, put it in in the lathe, and just kind of trimmed it just right there on that damaged section. Um, luckily, that worked out really good. I didn't really remove anything, and then I just kind of sanded it with a 1,000 grit to make it nice and pretty. Um, but turned out good. Um, so I'm, I'm happy with that. Um, we already put the flywheel back on, so I'm going to get it out of the uh, lathe, um, put it in the vise, and then we'll bake the flywheel. If you're ever doing any of your own flywheel removal, uh, later models had the timing notches and uh, that kind of e makes it easy to identify because timing notch always goes on the timing side. Um, this is an earlier crank and so it doesn't have any notches, smooth flywheel. So I usually will stamp um, like T for timing. Um, obviously if I had like the full assembly, I would have done like uh, one or a on one side stamp the rod to match stamp the flywheel so then that way everything stays um, consistent but since i just got the crank um, without rods fitted all i did was just indicate timing side so um, i'm going to stick this in the oven and then uh, get it pretty hot and so then that way it will drop on for us um, and then we can put the sludge trap the plug and then we can balance this thing. I just realized when I showed you the feed end repair, I didn't have the uh, live center up against it. I didn't want anyone to have the impression that I just uh, floated out of nowhere and, and cut that. I, I definitely had it supported with the live centers. Uh, it was set up properly and done right. Um, we are now ready to drop on our flywheel. I've got my T-handle ready. I've got my three bolts ready and two gloves on. Our timing side is up, drop, and spin. Yeah, she's in it perfectly snug. Woo, woo, woo. I think that one's in. That one's in place. That one's in place. Now we can start spinning. Come on. Bulky gloves are making it unfun. This one, oh yeah, that one feels good. Now that that top one's straightened out. All right. Now we will let it cool. This one didn't turn as gold. I like that. All right. Timing stamp, timing side. We're good to go. Okay, so now we're gonna start getting all this stuff ready for um, balance. I just showed you I was honing the uh, small end. I put new bushings in. Um, he actually supplied those, so that was quick and easy. Um, I've got the two piston assemblies here. I didn't do the cylinders for this, so um, he just sent this all along in the box. Um, so all I have to do is just really get weights off of it. And then, um, he has his original um, small uh, big end uh, 
bolts and nuts. And so I'm going to put the ARP kit in it. Um, so we need to get that mapped out um, with those. But I will uh, get these all cleaned off and then I'm going to go, um, they're not stamped as the pair, they came together. Um, he, he kept them, you know, matched up. So I'm gonna go stamp them as a pair uh, and then take, I've got them torqued up from when I checked the, the big in spec. Um, but I'll get the old bolts out and then we'll put those ARPs in. Before I put the ARP rod bolts in, I like to uh, clean up the edges. Um, I usually use the tang side to locate the um, shell bearing and I'll hold it with my thumb and then I'll slide the other side down. Well, because of that, the knife edge along here is uh, better off removed so then that way I'm not scraping the backside of the shell. So all I do is just kind of knock that edge off. It's nothing crazy. Just use like a little, like a rat tail file or something. Um, you don't have to get super carried away, but just to take off that machined edge. Same, even this, even this can be sharp enough on the aluminum. Uh, you can kind of even feel a little bit of a burr edge. So always a good idea. Um, if the other side feels really gross, I'll take it off. But because that side's just locating and I'm snapping it down from the other side, I don't usually worry about the tang side. Um, this one feels pretty good. I could probably just do a little bit, maybe even use just a stone on it. Um, but yeah, as far as like just the backside of the, um, protecting the backside of that shell, it's always a good idea to do that on the, um, the opposite side of where you'll snap it down in. But uh, I'm gonna do that really quick. And then I do like to use, um, I've got a plate with a hole in it, and I like to use that when I'm um, installing the rod bolts because they are a press fit, I guess. Um, they should be nice and snug, and instead of sitting there trying to fight it or using a um, object to hit it, <laughs> um, I just use an arbor press and just kind of finish it out. Feels nice, you can tell you know, how much resistance you're getting, so that's the way I prefer to do it. You can kind of even hear how much, you know, and once you, once you touch it with a file, you'll be able to tell, it's like, oh, there is quite a bit of a lip there. You're probably not gonna be able to tell. Uh, maybe I can get the light to hit it at just the right angle, but just just take that edge off. It's nothing crazy. Um, you know, I'm not trying to create a whole 45 in there. Um, it's just enough to, to remove that razor edge. So feels good on my thumb. That's good enough. And then we'll move on to, to the cap. Also, if you're gonna do it and you're coming straight in like this, be careful not to gouge in the middle here. You don't want to contact anything in the center. So if you need to do it off to the side or maybe put your finger in the way and, and, and run down in there, however you want to do it, but just be careful. All right, ARP rod bolts are in. Um, so now we will match up the caps and just uh, thread the nuts on the end. Just finger tight for now. Um, also, uh, if you ever get confused, the um, release for the tangs always go on the same side. Um, I'm going to do this as a 75% balance factor. Just kind of shoot for that and see where we land. Um, He's just going to do some uh, typical just joy riding, uh, nothing too crazy. I use seventy five percent pretty often. I do a lot of uh, that mid seventy range. Uh, we've talked a lot in the past about the uh, um, diminishing return on time spent balancing. So we'll see where this one kind of maps out right away. But I'm going to start recording weights. Awesome. I've been having a lot of really good luck um, with like the MGO setup, um, Hepalite range, you know, that kind of thing, where uh, they both measure perfectly the same. 
and so that's what we've got here 326 grams um, now I'm gonna do the small end these probably are not going to be right they're the same I mean 91 pretty typical oh not bad okay so this one's 92 so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna write 91 down and then we will um, remove a gram off the end of that one. Now I'm gonna switch it for the big end. So I'm just off a little bit between these. This one's 301.5 and this one is 303, I think. Yeah, 303, so not too, fat, not too far off. Um, I will correct this one, um, but for now, I just wrote down the lighter weight and um, we can get our bob weight started. I do need to get our shells open here. Two shells usually weighs about 45 grams. That's what these are probably gonna weigh, but weigh them anyway. Don't assume anything. All right, 45.0, just like they always do. Cams don't need to be in here anymore. Okay, so doing math, I got 100% of the rotating mass is going to be 346 grams and then 75% um, of the reciprocating mass is 312.75 grams with a grand total of 658.75 grams. So we need to make these weigh 658.75 each. And I still have some weight on here from the last one. I was about to say what these weigh without weight on them, but I'm not gonna say it because now I'm scared I'm wrong. Without any weight added, just the um, three nuts and the weights. Four nuts, duh. 662. Let's see what that maths out to. This happens quite often where the weight itself is a little bit heavier. And what I've done in the past is I will swap these big heavy um, God, what are these called? They've got a name. The ones you slide and you can turn it. Man, that's bothering me. Anyway, what I'll do is I'll take those off and then I'll swap them out with like a lighter uh, wing nut or something um, and then dial it in. So without those two, yeah, 586. So then I can put the two wing nuts on 600, 601. So now we need to add 57, 57, 57 .75. Okay, I'm gonna get these dialed in. We're gonna end up running um, wing nuts instead of the uh, big old bulky quick nuts. What are, man, it's gonna drive me nuts. ABS sells these and they call them something. All right, um, we've got these made up. Not a ton of weight on there to get there, but good to go, we match. 658.75, uh, I'm gonna put some vinyl tape over the uh, journals to protect them, because I take those bob weights on and off quite a few times, so. Thing needs a new blade in it really bad geez all right so I like to do that like I said protects the journals because I'm going to be because I'm gonna be doing this quite a lot That way I don't have to worry about nicking up and marring the beautiful, freshly ground journals. I do have to polish it 
I always uh, wait. If I know I'm going to balance a crank, I always wait and polish it after. Um, so we will be making them look nice after this is all done. But just for the time being, I don't like to be banging and knocking into them and pinching them with these aluminum bob weights. Okay. So now it's all set up. Wow, that's not bad at all. I'm going to spin it again just to make sure, but right now on the uh, drive side, it says I need to remove four grams, and on the timing side, it says I need to remove 40 grams. So, not too bad. Let's see, angle 52 is the bottom. Angle nine's the top. So if I switch to add instead of remove, it wants me to add at angle two, which I cannot do, it's impossible. And it wants me to add at angle 59, which four grams is not worth doing. But I'm gonna spin it again just to double check, make sure this is an accurate reading. But we will be removing, it looks like, for this job. I'm gonna use this ball end. Uh, end mill here and I'm going to punch a series of holes across here I like to use the ball ends that way there's no corners technically um, I've said this before I'm not a big fan of removing material I'd rather add it but this crank we don't have that option It doesn't benefit us to go too deep because um, w when you do start going deeper like that, what ends up happening is you're getting less and less effectiveness. Um, the, the further you get to the center, the less effective the material removed is. So I'd rather do a series of dimples than like one really deep one because it just isn't as, as good. Whoa, can't see. Uh, that's a pretty decent amount. We'll see where that got us. We had 40 to remove. Um, I don't know if we're going to be there or not. Uh, I'm not going to mess with the other side just because a lot of times um, this correction here will affect that one. So it's, we'll find out where we're at here. Then we'll accordingly. Okay, so we got a little bit of a change. So we were at um, 40 and now we are now need to remove 16 um, not too bad and then on our uh, left side it actually changed to angle 40 and it wants us to remove eight so i might go ahead and make a correction there um, and then i'm going to continue over here a little bit more i may i don't know if that so 54 would be about into this area here so pretty close to where we were at when we started um, I think it was 52 when we started, so now it's just moved over a little bit. Um, I may go a little deeper there. I may jump over here. I try not to um, do left and right corrections here, but because this is 54 and 40, I could maybe go down the center and it would affect this whole area, but eh, we'll, we'll stay kind of localized. Um, I will adjust here and here, and that may actually do it for us. Okay, so as you can see here, I ended up kind of flattening out that section, um, just smoothing it out. Uh, I didn't really feel comfortable diving too much deeper in any of those holes, and it was really staying pretty stagnant right here um, on that first hole that, that was that um, kind of like 40-ish range, or I'm sorry, 54 range. 40 was on the other side. Um, and then uh, I was down to three grams here, which is under um, a half of an inch ounce. So I just went ahead and left just that one hole um, that we had done there. So um, I'm happy with it. It's, it's getting to where um, it's under half inch ounce both sides, um, which is all you really need. And it's just going to start moving. You know, that this correction over here just kept moving further and further around the more I was adjusting on this side here. So that's when I know it's time to quit. Um, so cranks done uh, as far as balance I need to take the uh, flywheel bolts back out um, torque them back in um, and then 
make the corrections on the rods. Uh, once I've done that, then I can um, also polish the journals and then install the rods, and then we will be done here. Um, like I said, I inspected his um, cams for him, and then I cleaned them up and made them look all pretty. Uh, that way it's a little bit more worthwhile of him actually sending them, but um, he was just being cautious and making sure they were still good. They are just fine. Um, I would run them, and so... Uh, like I said, I just made them look nice, cleaned them up. Okay, so um, at this point we are ready to stretch the bolts onto the crank. Um, I got a good polish on it. Everything's to where it needs to be. Uh, it's all cleaned up. I don't think I showed that. I did remove just a little bit off the cap there. And then on this one, I uh, kind of took a little bit off the whole top radius. Uh, it was really like one and a half grams was all, so it wasn't much. Um, and then I just buffed it back out so it looked nice because he did a good job of uh, polishing these up so I didn't want to have some ugly end <laughs> that I uh, messed with. So, um, again, I didn't take the rods off, so they're not marked. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and do like one and two, just keep it straightforward. Um, you know, it, it's always a good idea to put things back where they came from. But in this case, since we're kind of starting over with everything, it's not uh, crucial. It's not going to cause any issues for us, really. But um, we want to make sure we clean clean the surfaces of the cap and beam. We'll clean in there, and we'll snap our uh, shells in, and then uh, get some assembly lube on it, and get it together. Okay, so now that you've got your beam cleaned, this is a beam. And then the other end's a cap, and together it's a connecting rod. So, a little fun technical tip there for you. I've cleaned the shells all up too, try not to, I, I never touch the inside. I was taught that, what was it? I can't remember, but you just don't ever touch the, the face of the shell. Um, but I did brake clean it, parts clean it, whatever it is. Um, but like I said before, I always put the tang side in first, let that locate, and then I will like line up that actual edge there, and so that's where it needs to be, and then I'll just kind of stop it, and then you just push the other side down nicely and evenly, and it should just fall right into place beautifully, and it feels really yeah, smooth, and then you know you're tight, it won't really shift anymore, but um, that way you we we had taken off that edge so now i don't have any like backing of the shell you know piled up right there we'll do the same thing in the cap here there is a line left from when i checked you can maybe you can see that but when i checked the big end um inside diameter uh, there's always like a a line from the hardened balls on the sun end so line up that side and then just push that side down. Sometimes you have to just finish it. Okay. So now, uh, what can you guys see? You can see too. All right. Okay. So the ARP rod bolts come with these packets. 
They come with the packets, but I don't really use them, as you can see. I've used... <laughs> This is how many, well, actually, I didn't mean, I've sent some of them back with the people that asked for them, but this is how many bolt kits I've installed, plus some. Anyway, I have a little tray of it that I got with, um, I think it's when somebody sends out the, whoever carries the um, BSA ones, they send these little tubs with way too much in it, so I, I've used this you know, for quite a few setups, but it's easier to open up one of those little packets. But it's the same ARP, Molly, assembly lube, whatever. Whatever formula they use. But you want to put it all over the face of the nut and then all over the threads there. So I'm going to just run these down and then we'll get the other side on and then we'll get our stretch gauge on it. Now, in the ARP instructions, it does walk you through how to do the uh, torquing, loosening, torquing, loosening procedure, but we're not doing that. I have the stretch gauge and I like using it. Plus, it's just fun to watch that grow. You want to make sure you start the cap on nice and evenly. It's a tight enough fit that if you get it cockeyed, it's not going to want to go on. And then you're going to be bouncing it all around and rattling it. Not good for your fresh setup. Also, this only works if you use your little finger. If you use any other finger, it won't be in spec. <laughs> I'm going to flip it around so you guys can see it. And then... You set your the depth of it. I might have to move you. I just realized I don't know if I'm going to be able to have the camera. No, I'll be able to swing past it, I think. All right, I'm going to try and do this without... Just now starting, we got a half, half thousandths. God damn it. One and a half. Two, two and a half, three. I keep moving it. Put a little bit of help on it so that way I can do this without moving it. You bitch. Okay. If you look at your little instructions, it'll tell you that when you use the stretch method, it's six and a half to seven. And so we're going to go to the six and a half here. We are currently at six, so we just need to go to that final little half thousandths right there. Now we're going to go over to the other side. You're really not supposed to move. A connecting rod until both sides are fully torqued because your shell bearing isn't theoretically ground at that point your big end actually will distort and be round when you get it fully torqued and so I don't really like doing that but there's no other way for me to get the gauge on so that's also why I don't bounce back and forth between them, is because I don't want to sit there and move the connecting rod back and forth a million times. 
All right, I flipped the gauge around again, so we'll be a little bit different angle. Maybe you can see the needle move a little bit better this way, but. The camera is like right in my way, so this is a bit frustrating to be honest. Okay, now we're getting some movement here. Come on. That was a pretty good one. Going for six and a half again. I think we can finish it here. A little bit more. There you go, six and a half. All right, now I'm gonna jump over and do the other side. I'm gonna get you out of my way because it's slowing me down. All right, you guys know this is my favorite part, so I like to do the old broad drop. Oh, so close to being the same. Doesn't really prove much other than it's not completely loose and my assembly lube is really sticky, but it looks cool. <sighs> if you were going to assemble this and run it like right away, you would probably want to use maybe something a little thinner, but because I know a lot of the stuff I send out is probably going to sit for a little bit, I like to run something a little heavier so I know it hangs around a little longer. Well, I didn't really have a clean transition at the end of this video and it's gonna be late, so not super concerned, but I just spent yesterday kind of goofing off with this frame for a buddy of mine. Um, it had where those um, tabs get cut off all the time. Somebody had done a pretty poor job of patching it it was holes were coming through and it was bad so there's a couple different little windows i cleaned up got the front looking you know quite a bit better there's a little bit of porosity right there i might go back and uh, fill in maybe with some uh, bronze or something but um and then he had a bunch of other little spots that he wanted me to make look nice so i did that um but like i said i didn't really have a good clean ending on this video so just kind of wrap things up um, I haven't quite decided what I'm going to do this week, but at least I can get this up there and I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what I'm feeling and excited about, but yeah, kind of back to doing just machine shop stuff. Uh, some of the videos on other things haven't been doing that great. So, um, uh, I'll kind of bounce back and forth and just do more, um, machine work. So let's see what I can come up with.